Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is part four of the McCall's 7537 Sew Along. Today we're going to be attaching these sleeves we're going to be making this rouleau loop or this drawstring for the bodice and we're going to be finishing our dress off. So let's get started. Okay, so I am doing the large billowy sleeves. So I am on dress B and step 22. The first thing we want to do is gather the upper edge of the sleeve between the small circles as shown. So I'm going to run two lines of long gathering stitches. So like a 4.55 length and between the two circles so that this will be, be easy to set the sleeve cap into the arm side. And then we shall be French seaming because it's me and of course we will. I've run my lines of gathering stitching between the red dots or the small dots as per the pattern. When I mark my shoulder placement of, on sleeves I tend to not use a, use a large circle, I add an, a notch. And so I've done my lines of gathering stitching 3 eighths of an inch away from the raw edge and then 3 eighths of an inch away from that. So the actual stitching line is in between here. Again that's something that I tend to do quite a lot. You will want to make sure that your fabric can take that. So some fabrics don't won't like having needle holes put in them and it won't go away this one's very forgiving so i can get away with it so the next thing that we need to do is french seam the side seams of these sleeves and that's going to be done in exactly the same way we've been doing the rest of the french seams wrong sides together quarter of an inch trim press turn press three eighths of an inch press done so i'm going to get that done next and then i'm going to finish the raw edge of the hem of the sleeve right before i attach it to the dress just so that i have less fabric to maneuver around if it's attached to the dress and you have a giant bit of fabric to maneuver around and if it's not then you just have one sleeve per time Okay, so I have sewn the side seams of the sleeves together at a quarter of an inch. I'm now trimming, trimming the excess off so that it's down to one eighth of an inch. Then I'm going to turn it inside out, press it, and then I'll sew the final seam at three eighths of an inch. And then we have French seamed our side seams. You want to press the seam in the opposite direction of the side seams of the bodice. And they are pressed to the back, so you're going to want to press these seams to the front. Okay, so I've sewn the final part of the seam at three eighths of an inch, and then I've pressed it towards the front. You can tell it's the front because it's the one with the single notch here. The double notch here is for the back of the sleeve. So the next thing I'm going to do now is hem the sleeve. The pattern would like you to form casing for elastic, turn lower edge inside along fold line, turning in one quarter six millimeters on raw edge, press stitch close to inner edge leaving an opening. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run a line of stitching three eighths of an inch away from the raw edge which will give me my press line that I can then press that up to and then again these sleeves will not come to my wrist so I don't mind hemming them by a little bit more than the pattern calls for so I'm going to like I say run a line of stitching three eighths of an inch use that as my press line and then fold and fold again and then use my edge stitch foot or my blind hem foot to sew close to the edge leaving an opening for the elastic so we get that done now okay so I've run the line of stitching <laughs> along the three eighths of an inch away from the raw edge and I've used that as my press my first press line and then I've pressed it up again so that I will be able to make a casing for the elastic. So I'm going to sew this along this edge using my blind hem foot uh, because it has a guide so I'll be able to get nice and close to this edge. I'm going to leave myself a little gap so that I can get the elastic in. That's the next thing to do. Okay, so the pattern wants you to cut two pieces of elastic, each the measurement of wrist plus one inch. Insert elastic through opening in casing, lap ends, hold with safety pin, try on, adjust if necessary, stitch ends of elastic securely. I've done my elastic, but I've actually done it for my forearm. Ooh. Chiana got upset last night. I actually have done it for my forearm rather than my wrist because as I mentioned I think these sleeves are going to be quite short and they're going to be gathered with this amount of elastic in them as well but I do want them to be comfortable to be worn up on my forearm rather than my wrist. So I have measured those out. I have myself a safety pin. I'm going to put the safety pin through the elastic, seed it through the casing and sew the ends together without getting the elastic twisted. Wish me luck. So I have thread the elastic through. I've made sure it's all nice and flat and I've overlapped by probably about half an inch. The pattern does say to add an extra inch on and uh, that's what it's for. So you can overlap. That stitching is never gonna be seen. So we're gonna make that go into the casing and then you want to sew the rest of the, the little hole that you've left. You wanna sew that shut in the same method that we did 
the rest of this seam. So I'm going to get my edge foot um, or my blind hem foot out again and again that's because it has that guide on it so that I can finish up those two little holes. Then we can start attaching the sleeves to our dress. So the first step of French seaming a sleeve is to pin the sleeve into the bodice wrong sides together and you want to match up the notches so we've got the double notch for the back match there single notch for the front the underarm seam and then as I mentioned I notch the top of my sleeve to match it up with the shoulder seam then you're going to continue pinning in until you get to where the gathering starts and then you want to pull your gathering stitches so that you can gather in the excess into the sleeve cap here. So I'm now going to go around and I'm going to sew this at a quarter of an inch seam allowance the whole way around. Once you've sewn your sleeve in the wrong sides together you're then going to want to trim your seam allowance down to one eighth of an inch and you'll end up with a whole bunch of stuff that looks like this. So we're now going to go and press our sleeve so that the right sides are together so we can pin it again and sew it with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once you've pressed the right sides together you should have a nice crease with that tiny little 1 eighth of an inch seam sandwiched between those and then you're going to want to put in your pins again. And we're going to sew at 3 eighths of an inch the entire way around as we would do with a normal French seam and just want to be taking a lot of care around here to make sure that your gather gathers are nice and evenly spaced and you want to sew with the seam part of your stitching under the presser foot and the main bodice by the feed dogs. So once you have sewn that final seam you want to remove the gathering stitches the ones that at least the ones that are going to be visible on the outside you also want to very lightly press the seam allowance towards the sleeve but without pressing any of these gathers flat then you can try your dress on and I'm going to do that now and see if I'm going to add the eyelets and the drawstring or if I can get away without doing that. So I have installed my eyelets. I've only gone for eight rather than ten because I didn't want it to go all the way up to the top and I have done that because this edge is a little bit stretched out and that could be because I cut this out probably about two months ago and it's been floating around the sewing room since so that was my own fault. As I say I'm probably going to make this dress again because I do like it so it will be interesting to see what the next one comes out like and if I stay stitch that edge first we shall see. I used my Hebdar or Green Grizzly press for putting it in the rivets. I have the 8mm rivets in here. This will be linked in the description bar down below. You can use a hand press, you can use a, a set of rivets that come with a little hammer or with a little tool that you use with a hammer. There's lots of different ways of putting in rivets. I haven't shown you how I did mine because as I say I've used this and not everyone's going to have access to this. So I now need to make a tie. So I have torn myself off um, strips that are just over an inch, probably an inch and a half wide and I'm going to use some string to make myself some ties for the top or for the top of the dress. So my ties aren't going to be quite long enough so I'm going to need to join them together. You could just sew the straight ends together but you end up with a very bulky part so I have done it like you would a strip of bias. So the important thing to note is that I've overlapped there and there and I'm sewing from corner to corner and so when I go and press this and trim all that excess off the seam or the edge will be nice and even and that will help turn this through a little easier than if we had made a straight seam. So I'm going to go press this, trim all of this, this excess off here and then we can start sewing. So you want to lie your fabric right side up and then you're going to take the string and you're going to make a sandwich of the fabric by folding the edges of the fabric over together with the string in the middle. I've moved my needle over and it's as close to the bar of my foot as I can get it without it hitting the bar. It's, it's allowing me to sew it equally because I still have the edge of the foot butted up against the string and I'm still making the raw edges meet. So I've backstitched at the beginning and again I have my tail of string up there that I haven't attached yet so you don't want to pull on your string. Just take your time, reposition, make sure that you're happy with where everything is lying. Remember to not pull on your string. Backstitch at the end. And again, very careful when you're taking this off the machine because you haven't secured your string as yet. So I'm going to secure the string in place. stitch and just sew over the string backwards and forwards really securing that in place okay so once you've secured that in place you want to trim off this excess here 
and then we're going to take the pinking shears and trim down the seam allowance nice and close to our stitching line to help us turn it through and again try and do this in the viewfinder without cutting things that I'm not meant to be cutting ask me how I know So I've left this on the, I haven't cut the end, this end of the string off as yet uh, because you don't really need to. So what we need to do is take hold of the string and we're going to feed the fabric back on itself down to this end. And again, it's once it's started, it's so much easier It's getting it started. You need a little bit of slack so that you can hold onto the string and push the fabric over. It should be slightly easier in theory a bit more slack and again you want to be careful not to bunch the loops the fabric up too much because then it gets stuck you don't want to twist the fabric as you're pushing it down the string because again it'll get twist it'll get stuck Just gently pull it over that initial starting point. There we go. And then when you pull it down like this, the fabric naturally wants to twist. And as I said, that's not what you want because it will get stuck on itself. So you want to kind of feed it along like so. And just give yourself a little bit more. Feed it along and repeat. So I'm holding onto the string and then feeding the excess fabric over itself. You end up with lots of little sheddy, sheddy bits from all the, bi the bias that you've cut from the pinking shears, but that's fine. And again, I've got it a little bit too bunched up there. And as I said, everybody has their preferred method of turning loops like this. This is just something that works for me. So, and it doesn't involve having to buy fancy bits of equipment. Once you get to the point uh, where you've got enough through, you can hold on to the end of the string and just kind of pull with your fingers and then it will start to come through as you can see here. There we go. So I mean it's still fairly narrow, it's not like it's a giant thick loop that you could have uh, turned through, um, you know, like fed back on itself with a safety pin or anything. So it's still a nice kind of size. Um, but as I say, this is just a way that I have found that works for me. So you cut off the string and then I use my purple pokey thing to kind of feed the raw ends back in on themselves because you're going to want to either by hand or by machine run some stitches over the end to make sure that all the raw edges are enclosed and this is a good way of in theory it has it does work trust me trust me I'm a seamstress getting that nicely enclosed. You want to feed it back on itself a little bit like that and then as I say you can either hand stitch or machine stitch this end and then you end up with a nice loop So I have my cord end, I got these from eBay and once this has been sewn you then want to feed it through the smaller edge of your cord end and again you can use your purple pointy tool to help help with that. Once you've got it through you then want to tie this end in a knot and bear in mind that I've not sewn this end with a machine yet so if any straggly bits come out that's 
because I'm being a bit lazy but yeah so you tie tie a knot and you want to bring that knot as small and as close down to the end as you can like that and then you bring your cord oh that knot's not quite big enough I'm gonna to have to do another one the last ones that I did were slightly thicker than this because I erred on the side of too much caution because I was worried I wasn't going to be able to turn it through so a couple of knots and this is where fray check comes into play so you bring your cord end down like that and you can get your purple pointy tool and kind of stuff that all back up in there I, I like to use some fray check on this as well just so that the knots really aren't going to come undone and then you have cord end attached to your cord as it were as ever if you have any questions at all please let me know in the comment section down below and i will do my best to answer them for you now, as i said at the beginning of this video series this dress was very outside of my comfort zone more because of the skirt than because of the bodice and i do really like this dress this fabric is from the textile center it's a viscose or a rayon and it's really really pretty i think i've worked out why it was so inexpensive the print is actually running from selvage to selvage not down the length of the fabric so if you look closely at my dress, all of the flowers are going across the bodice and across the skirt. But because there's so much fabric in the skirt with the gathering and because this is quite busy and is broken up with these lines, I think I kind of get away with it. But I will be bearing that in mind because I have this fabric on a white background, which I do want to use for other things. So I will be cutting everything out on the cross grain. Having said that, that's totally fine. I really love this dress and I will wear this dress as is. This was one of those fabrics that they had on, I think four colorways. So there was the white, the pink, blue and yellow and I bought the white and the pink and I wish I bought the other ones as well. This is something that's again a little bit outside of my comfort zone. You guys don't often see me wear pink and I actually really really like it. Uh, usually it's only hints of pink but this is definitely all over pink but it has my favourite leaves and tropical flowers and orchids all over it so I'm happy. I think going forward I will as I say make this dress again. I am going to lengthen the sleeves even more than I have. I added an inch of length to the sleeve and that's where they come to. They're not meant to be wrist length, they are meant to be slightly shorter than that, but I would like the option. I think I'll keep these ones and then I'll draft or I will retrace these sleeves and then add sort of maybe three inches so they could be properly wrist length sleeves because I have some fabrics that are slightly heavier crepes than this and I can imagine making those as autumn dresses with kind of chestnutty coloured trims on them and things like that. And that's one of the things I love about this dress is all the different trims on it. I think going forward as well, I mentioned in the sew along that I have sewn the midriff seams with a quarter of an inch seam allowance rather than the five eighths of an inch seam allowance and I think what I'm going to do is the pattern calls for you to add length to the torso in just the midriff section so I'm going to leave that as is and then sew it next time with the five eighths of an inch seam allowance what I'm going to go back in and do is add probably about three quarters of an inch of length to this section of it because it is just kind of hitting my underwires are down here so they're in the midriff section and I would like the bodice to hit down there instead the other thing that I have noticed is that this neckline around here did stretch out or is a little bit baggy and that was another reason I put in the eyelets and this drawstring I mean otherwise also as you can see it is very scandalously low I did cut this out back in March and then I only sewed it up in July so it could have been that it's been moved around a lot and that's when it stretched out or it could be that I need to maybe have a look at taking a little bit of length out of this side of the pattern but that would be something that I'm going to cut the next one out as is see if it has it was all the manhandling that stretched it out or if it was uh, something that I need to address but the next one's definitely going to have one of these ties on it as well. I want to say thank you to all of my lovely Patreon peeps whose names are running along the screen now. Thank you to every single one of you for taking the time to vote on which pattern that I should be making for this sew along. I'm really really pleased that you picked this one. I don't know if I've told you this but I like it and I can see myself making quite a few iterations of this. There are different sleeve options, there is a straight sleeve, the little cap sleeve, 
I think there's a sleeveless option and then there's this one as well and there's also different options for colour blocking around these areas as well which I'm very excited about so I definitely will be making more of this because it's just such a lovely comfortable dress to wear so thank you very much to every single one of you for voting for this pattern if you do make something and you put it up on Instagram or any social media make sure to use the hashtag Sean made me do it because I would absolutely love to check out what you guys have been up to I think that's enough waffle for one day I really hope you've enjoyed this sew along series if you have enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and i will see you again very soon bye